Bonjour à tous. Hello, everybody. Oh, sorry, I missed the, the first a green light. We're delighted to welcome you for this session dedicated to uh, how can we make the uh, capital market union um, uh, happen. It might seem a bit arcane to you uh, from the outset, but actually it's really about uh, growth, technology, energy transition. So it's really a, a, a major lever. So um, let me introduce the panelists. Uh, it will be our pleasure to welcome Marege McGuinness. Uh, she's the uh, EU Commissioner for uh, Financial Stability and Capital Markets. Uh, it's actually a pre-recorded uh, interview. Um, uh, Mirella Agash Durand from Group uh, Asset Management, Lorenzo Binis Maggi from uh, Societe Generale, Jakob von Weizsäcker, uh, who's uh, Finance Minister uh, from Germany, Jean Frederic Deleuze from UBS, and Grégoire Saint Hilles from Next Stage Asset Management. This session, as uh, all the others, uh, is placed under the um, ages of the Cercle des Economies. Isabelle Coupé Soubiran, representing said circle, will tell us about the uh, well, the, the highlights of uh, uh, and the challenges of this session. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, well, I'm delighted to be here. Um, so we're going to talk about the capital market union. It is a reform uh, initially that was uh, put forward by uh, Jean-Claude Juncker seven years ago when he was um, uh, the head of the European Commission and it was supported by the uh, commissioner uh, who was then Jonathan Hill. That reform had been uh, put forward as the counterpart of the banking union. Um, so we might want to discuss this point actually. Um, and you could um, but you could also um, argue that it's uh, got very little to do with the banking union because it was never it was not about uh, uh, giving uh, the uh, European Market Authority a bigger role beyond a consultation. Um, it's not really something uh, that re that was about reorganizing on a European uh, uh, level uh, markets. What was the um, the, the, the point uh, and uh, the initial idea? Uh, it was to develop market debt for uh, SMEs and, if need be, to uh, uh, stimulate securitization by um, really presenting it as something new and improved compared to uh, what pre-existed before the financial crisis. Uh, so new, uh, more transparent and standardized securitization. This reform is dedicated to reunifying markets after a debt crisis that had fragmented markets a great deal and that is geared towards uh, improving financing for uh, European companies. I'm sure a lot of positive uh, aspects will be uh, are going to be said about the need for a capital market union, but I'd like maybe just uh, to uh, um, uh, ask a few a few important questions and, and be slightly provocative. So, uh, I told you that after the sovereign debt crisis, um, so the the need for a capital market union uh, emerged. So, uh, what is the current lie of the land? Where well, where are we at? Because we're going to listen to uh, uh, people uh, amongst the panelists who uh, uh, um, uh, can tell us of the situation uh, uh, on the markets. Uh, of course, also, there's um, uh, what we've learned in the pandemic, what was needed, uh, major, you know, so massive uh, injection of uh, liquidity by uh, the uh, central banks, um, result in markets that are pretty robust. Um, but 
is that to say that it really uh, stimulates um, uh, our economies? Is there not uh, a, a, a bit of a, of a gap um, uh, between um, the markets and the central banks? Secondly, are, are, are the European companies really um, uh, you know, best suited uh, uh, to uh, 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 market financing. It seems that our uh, companies in Europe are mostly dependent on banking uh, financing, and uh, so market financing has often been seen as something that was fraught with problems. Uh, and that uh, all the effort had to be geared towards uh, bringing all the banking financing uh, to channel it to um, uh, European companies again. I'm sure not everybody will agree, but it's worth asking the question. And um, we, uh, I think we can agree that there's an, a need for diversifying uh, financing for companies. If we're talking about SMEs, should indeed be a, a mixed financing and maybe also include a, a big chunk of participatory uh, uh, financing or, uh, um, or crowdfunding and not only uh, banking uh, financing. Uh, another point I'd like to raise, is a capital market union possible without a budgetary uh, union? Can uh, we um, make it happen? Is it possible without a common debt to uh, really protect ourselves from the threat of a uh, sovereign debt crisis? Uh, is it possible without more uh, mutualization? There is the EU Next Generation Plan, the recovery plan, which um, is based on mutualized uh, financing. So uh, is it the way we uh, are starting to really lay the foundations for this um, capital market union? Uh, it'll be interesting to hear uh, Mr. Uh, von Weisecker on this. Another couple of points uh, very quickly. What will be the consequences uh, in the midterm um, of those major uh, liquidity injections uh, from the uh, European Central Bank on the way markets operate? Uh, can there be, uh, can it uh, create uh, uh, bubbles? Um, uh, and so, uh, and what of the credibility of the European Central Bank? Uh, and do we have any inkling of the capacity of markets to regain a, a, a sort of um, a normal uh, modus operandi? Um, remember, after the Fed started uh, normalizing its monetary policy before the uh, uh, crisis, uh, it uh, proved to be impossible. I'm almost done, Emmanuel. Well, I'm keeping an eye on you. All right. Um, so last thing, shouldn't the capital market union translate into greener uh, markets? Shouldn't it be the number one priority? So green finance uh, is developing with uh, um, uh, responsible uh, uh, f funds uh, and low carbon uh, financing, and there is uh, an increase in uh, green reporting. But will markets uh, grow greener by themselves? How can we uh, actually uh, make them greener um, uh, more quickly? And, uh, uh, and to that end, uh, the European Central Bank probably has a role to play. It's become an investor and uh, a uh, uh, it has a responsibility to uh, set the example. The uh, share of private securities it buys is very, uh, very low, but it could still be exemplary. So those are the questions I wanted to ask just uh, to kickstart the discussion. Thank you very much, Isabel. That's too many questions, I think. We can't tackle them all, but at least we've, uh, we've raised them. What matters is to raise the right questions, isn't it? Yes, indeed. And we'll try and, you know, give a few answers. So let's listen to Moraes McGuinness. Uh, we uh, asked her and, uh, these questions, where are we at, what is the motivation of the European Commission to make uh, On these uh, questions, we listen to the Commissioner. Uh, ...to be with us uh, and sharing your view on the capital uh, market uh, union, maybe the first 
question. Uh, are we still on a good road to capital market unions? Well, firstly, I'm really happy to be able to be with you and discuss a really important issue for the European Union. Um, capital markets union is not new, but we're not there yet. So to answer your question, um, we are really committed in the Commission to uh, deliver, to deliver capital markets union. But there are many steps along the way. And I think we always knew in 2015 when this project was launched that it would take time. However, my own view is that we are now moving too slowly and we need to advance capital markets for many reasons and I'm sure we will discuss them to help us in the recovery, to make sure that money flows towards sustainable investments, to get retail investors on board. Um, and really what my message would be is that the Commission obviously has a key role to play, but equally the European Parliament, of which I'm a former member, is important in the process, as are the member states. And I think what's really important is that there is commitment politically to developing capital markets union. And perhaps as a result of Brexit, there's also a renewed focus on this, as there is because of the crisis we're going through. And what I would like to see is that political commitment translating into actions in a number of areas that have still to be complete. Uh, to what extent uh, COVID crisis can help uh, to accelerate? I mean, uh, what could be the role of capital markets union uh, in helping the recovery after COVID? And does the impact of the pandemic require changes uh, in your approach? I mean, I think this is a really interesting question. Um, I know that after the last financial crisis, we saw how in the US that have stronger capital markets, uh, the recovery was quicker. Uh, Europe hadn't got a developed capital markets union and we felt the negative impact of that. As we look to what's happened because of this pandemic, um, we know, for example, that our businesses rely very heavily on bank financing and that was crucial throughout uh, the pandemic and, and important that banks continue to learn. But we want to diversify the sources of funding for businesses and for SMEs. And we also want to make sure that where citizens are saving money, that this money can be used for good investment purposes. So in a way, I believe that this crisis and our look towards recovery should be an impetus for us to deepen our capital markets, to make them more liquid, more accessible. And I think part of the work in the Commission is to ensure that that happens. Um, we will We'll see some pressure in the system. There are some sectors and indeed member states particularly badly hit because of the pandemic. And we're making huge efforts, including with Next Generation EU. We're also encouraging our banks to continue to lend. Uh, and we're also wanting to make sure that the capital markets union evolves and can contribute to the process of recovery. And perhaps another area that we might discuss is how it, uh, the capital markets union would contribute to this very big agenda as we recover, which is towards sustainable and a digital resilient Europe. So to achieve uh, the capital markets union, uh, it's still a, a, a long road to go. What are your main priorities? Look, um, we're doing everything that we can in terms of encouraging, first of all. We're looking at, for example, um, the role of insurance. So we will be bringing forward uh, reforms of the Solvency II package to make sure that the insurance industry can invest for the long term as part of the Capital Markets Union. We're also looking at um, the European Long Term Investment Funds, seeing can we uh, amend, review and amend in order to make investment for the future um, possible and flexible and we're looking at transparency rules in trading uh, one of the things that I have certainly heard from citizens is that they don't feel that they can access um, or be investors in the capital market as retail investors um, and it's that's an area that we need to look at and develop further and that will take issues like quality of information and transparency uh, and on the point about information we are working on quite a big project consolidated tape to give transparency to the market so that 
that market participants can see immediately what's happening in terms of price formation and price movement. Um, so all of these things are part of our step-by-step -step process towards capital markets union. Uh, but one of the things that I'm going to try and do is talk more frequently to citizens about the importance of capital markets. The discussion, in my view, has been too industry focused and it needs to be more inclusive of citizens so that they understand that you know, capital markets are about their present and their future, for example, investing uh, pension funds, and equally that their role in achieving our big targets around uh, sustainability, biodiversity and climate targets are really crucial when it comes to sustainable finance. And if I might also say that, uh, in my view, banking union, capital markets union, uh, you, they're part of the same package. And while we've had some progress on both, um, we need to take more steps forward. And that's why we do need that the member states, the European Parliament, work with us in the Commission to advance these very noble objectives, which have political support. But clearly, there are some areas where member states find it difficult to move, uh, both in banking union and capital markets union. Um, and my role is to encourage uh, um, member states, the European Parliament, to look at what is positive. So the banking union, capital markets union, can deliver and help us work towards uh, our objectives, get over many of the challenges we face. Um, so in the capital markets, for example, we have issues around insolvency procedures, which differ naturally amongst member states, and that's something that we do need to look at. But look, it is part of our approach here, which is step by step. But I think the current crisis and our look to the future uh, reminds us of both the absence of a completed capital markets union and the added value of having CMU for our economy and our society. So what you underline uh, finally is that uh, what seems a very technical uh, subject, capital markets uh, union, is really uh, a key to uh, serve to serve wider uh, policy aims of the European Union. Well, I think I couldn't have put it better myself. I think you make the case very clearly. If you leave something as just a technical issue to be resolved, it doesn't resonate with citizens. And obviously, Capital Markets Union is important for people at every stage of life, whether they work in a company that needs investments from the capital markets or whether they're investing funds or pensions for their own future. So it is fundamental that we don't just talk technically about Capital Markets Union, that we talk in a way that that engages our citizens. And there is a wider dimension here, if I may, not just on the sustainability agenda that I've already outlined, key to get capital moving towards sustainable investments. Therefore, a strong CMU is important. But equally, when we look towards open strategic autonomy and the international role of the euro, we're all building towards that to strengthen the international role of the euro. And the stronger our capital markets union, the better we will be placed to strengthen the role of the euro on the global stage. So in a way, there are many elements to the CMU. Uh, some are technical, but many are political, and they are also of absolutely core importance to citizens. And maybe if we spoke more about how important CMU is for people, perhaps there would be more political buy-in. So that's my clear message today. So you said CMU, uh, it's made for European people, but it could also have a big impact uh, on uh, the global role and position of the European Union in the world. Yes, I mean, it's about providing alternative uh, funds for our businesses. Um, so it's about this choice where we don't want the banks or the businesses to rely fully on bank lending. But it's about much more on that, than that. It's about the European Union having strong financial infrastructures. Um, we clearly have had a fragmenting event because of Brexit. So we are, you know, destined in a way to look at our own infrastructure, our own, um, if you like, um, I I failures or uh, deficiencies when it comes to capital markets. And this is a project that has been on the agenda uh, for some number of years. We have made advances. I think we are now trying to accelerate 
the work towards capital markets union uh, for clearly for individual member states is important for our SMEs for our businesses for our citizens but equally for the role of the European Union globally and the international role of the euro I think developing our capital markets union completing banking union are fundamental issues uh, that I believe we will need to make more rapid progress on in the future than we are currently Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner McGuinness. It was really a pleasure and an honor, and an honor to uh, have uh, you uh, with us to share your view on uh, the Capital Markets Union. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. My pleasure to talk to you. Voilà les propos de euh, Madame McGuinness. Well, that was Commissioner uh, McGuinness. Uh, well, the uh, English of uh, the interviewer, that is me, was, as you noticed, uh, incredible. Um, but what's really interesting is what uh, the lady said about uh, it being about our, uh, an impact on our daily life. So to really understand what we're talking about, what is the the price we're paying currently because we don't have a capital market union. Well, it's fairly uh, uh, easy. Uh, it is uh, killing uh, uh, Europe ever since 1970. Out of the 142 companies that have been uh, uh, set up uh, in the world, uh, over $100 billion in capitalization, out of 142, Emmanuel, how many of these 142 are European? One or two? One. SAP. It was set up in 1971. So, really, uh, what's at stake here is fairly simple. In terms of GDP, we have uh, uh, pretty much the same uh, GDP as uh, you know China and, 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 the, and the US. We compare to the EU. So, our savings, uh, we, we, we have the highest savings in the whole world, but it's not being invested in uh, equity. Uh, so, it is, you know, collective suicide. Uh, same as the uh, as Spain with gold back in the in the Middle Ages. Well, as Jezebel reminded us in her introduction, there's a number of uh, pretty dramatic changes that have um, uh, taken place that seem to uh, really um, call for this uh, capital market union. There are not enough uh, uh, assets without risks in the EU. Well, we've injected quite a lot of debt. There's now a common shared uh, debt as part of, and uh, the, 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 br the British are no longer there to make everything, to make our lives difficult. Well, that's my personal opinion, says the speaker. Um, so is it true? What are the uh, remaining stumbling blocks uh, on the road to a capital market union? Because there are still people saying you can't have a capital market union if you don't have a, um, a European an EU budget. Is it a relevant argument to need a common budget if we want to have a capital market union? Well, thank you so much for uh, inviting me. I think what the commissioner said kind of surprised me, actually, because it explains everything. If you think that capital market union is going to materialize just by th talking to people and saying, well, it's in your interest, it'll be good for you, well, my, my, what I say to you is good luck, uh, because they haven't a clue what you're talking about. Um, the economists, of course, know what it is about. Um, uh, compared with the US, we have a system that is not as competitive because we have a uh, financial system that is based on banks, the capital markets that make it possible for uh, companies to uh, finance themselves and recapitalize is, 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 is lacking or weak uh, in the EU. We economists and technicians understand that, but what uh, is missing is political, is political will, political leadership. Um, which would be to face up to uh, the obstacles and say, for the good of Europe, we have to make that effort together. So uh, what you're saying is that not only the man in the street doesn't know what we're talking about, but that pol pol political decision makers don't know what we're talking about. Well, um, 
has has um, uh, you know uh, have uh, political decision makers uh, uh, gone to explain to the 300 million Europeans what it was about and why we needed a, a capital market union? Have politicians uh, tried to explain monetary union? No, we had the crisis in 1992 and the Maastricht Treaty. And there were political uh, uh, elements that came into play. But, you know, polit politicians often react to crises. And what I fear is that when there is no crisis, things don't move, you know, there's no um, moving forward. And um, when there's a crisis and there's a necessity to make progress very fast, uh, then uh, you make excuses, you know, you. you, you uh, you have to set up a common uh, system for bankruptcies, for example, and we'll never have a, 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 a common system. So I think it's moving too slowly and there is a need for political leadership and political leadership only emerges uh, when there is a crisis. Five or six years ago in 2015, the European Commission uh, took the uh, initiative of that project, uh, Capital Market Union, for the for you know to safeguard the competitiveness of um, uh, European uh, companies. European companies uh, actually cannot get decent financing, um, and because of uh, you know uh, bureaucracy, because we want to keep control over the the the, the market, but the, the the French market, the Italian market, the German market, they they almost don't exist. They're too small, uh, so we can't be competitive. But what should we do first? We need a strong political initiative that acknowledges that financing systems are the core of the system and uh, we need a unique regulator and uh, we would need also to have bills. She uh, did not mention uh, securitization. If we do not develop this as the US did, uh, well, banks uh, capital is not sufficient to finance degrowth. So what we need is not European budget, but we need a strong political initiative uh, to uh, act before the crisis. Uh, because you're talking about strong political uh, initiatives, we might have a look at what Jacob von Weizsäcker says in Germany. He's with us. Uh, you heard Lorenzo Benismagi, who talks about all the arguments or technical pretexts saying that a strong political will is needed before the next crisis. What is your perspective on that? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. And I'm really sorry I can't be here. I totally agree with what Lorenzo said, but I would like to add that there's an important aspect to consider in uh, many countries in Europe, people have a lot of savings uh, and uh, Europe is a champion of the world for savings. So uh, the money is, sits in uh, bank accounts or insurance, uh, insurance, pension insurance, for instance, and they do not use their savings in uh, uh, profitable assets uh, such as shares or real estate. Germany is a very bad example. And uh, I'm not saying that people should not buy insurance contracts or put their money in the banks, but uh, uh, eventually it will be a better decision and uh, it will lead to uh, have probably more wealth. Uh, that should be probably uh, be organized by government. Jacob, sorry. Yes, your proposal is quite uh, clear. 
uh, when you say we have to use savings uh, towards asset. So is that what you're... Yes, that's one of the aspects I wish to underline. Uh, but I think we should uh, offer the citizens better products to, uh, uh, for example, finance a part of their pensions through capital markets. And uh, Grégoire said that uh, we have a problem with fragmentation, indeed, and especially concerning uh, technological companies, uh, SAP is the only one that uh, Grégoire mentioned. And in France, in Germany, all over Europe, we tried to create uh, national ecosystems so that it would be easier to create uh, companies and to have a, a very quick growth for startups, for instance. But uh, when they want to be listed, it's very complex. So uh, it would be very important if we could create a market segment. Of course, I'm well aware that there are fragmented uh, stock markets throughout Europe. But if we could uh, try and have uh, segments such as NASDAQ, uh, some sort of a European NASDAQ that would overcome this uh, fragmentation of stock markets uh, symbolically and even uh, uh, realistically it would be a very good thing and help us to create markets uh, uh, that would work, uh, unique capital markets that would work. Okay, Jean-Frédéric Delet. Thank you very much, Jacob. Lorenzo was uh, talking about uh, the um, debt, sovereign debt crisis and the banking union. Uh, you wish to make a parallel between the uh, CMU and the banking union, warning us that we should not reproduce uh, the mistakes we made with the banking union for uh, capital market union. Yes, uh, I published an article with Olivier Pastré uh, a couple of years ago to explain that uh, through the regulation and the creation of the banking union uh, at the beginning of 2010, European banks stepped back somehow, and there was a decrease in market share, which profited American banks because uh, the uh, banking uh, concept in Europe uh, was not adapted. Uh, and I would uh, uh, wish that the capital market union would not reach the same stage. Today, uh, capital market union are uh, uh, about uh, great notions to have a more stable uh, banking system, to have people uh, save more. But I, what I fear is that it's a extra regulation layer. And uh, I would point out two examples. Well, first, the uh, uh, protection of the investor, the uh, MIFID. And this is the third generation of MIFID. And for market players, those are uh, uh, um, very heavy regulations that the foreign uh, actors do not have to comply with. And then the prospectus directive, which is uh, to harmonize the issue of titles. But uh, national regulators after this uh, 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 system uh, add uh, complexity or market fragmentation. So what I believe, uh, and I agree with uh, Lorenzo Binismagi, is that the capital market union is something very serious to be only given to regulators, and it needs to be a strong uh, political initiative. Because we're talking about the drawbacks of fragmentation, there is uh, one point you wish to underline, and which is the uh, fragmentation it implies in terms of standards, reporting rules, etc. 
and that maybe to go towards capital market union would uh, uh, be an opportunity to harmonize rules. Yes. I would also like to have a more committed point of view. Indeed, what you're saying is true. We do not wish the CMU to become an other uh, regulation for businesses. But there are uh, pros to uh, CMU. And one of the pros is that it might be a tool for us to help us concerning uh, competitivity with other areas. Uh, Brexit, for example, might be a completely uh, different regulation uh, uh, than ours, and it uh, could be uh, unfair competition. Same thing with Asia. So yes, it's difficult for us to agree on uh, different subjects, and it's heavy, and it's a slow process. But it would be a very efficient tool to uh, stand up for a businesses and our ability to develop our economy in the future. And I'd like to come back to, on two points. Well, one uh, tiny subject which has heavy consequences. We are trying to uh, uh, build a European standard uh, that would be extra financial. We talked about the importance of uh, energy transition and have a green economy. How to proceed? Well, today we might define what are the indexes saying that a company uh, is green, that a uh, 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 security is green, and those norms are equal, are, are, uh, can be compared to sovereignty. And if we do not use the CMU to have European standards that would allow us to uh, have transparency concerning uh, comparable criteria for Europe and the US, uh, saying that uh, such a security is green for Germany, France, and the US, because uh, in our portfolio we invest in all areas. Well, it, it would be uh, key for us to master those standards. And uh, the Europe is uh, uh, going, uh, following that path, but we have to be committed so that those standards reflect our vision, uh, saying what is the extra financial component in our companies, so that we uh, keep on path uh, because the environmental stakes are not European, they're global, and we do not need to uh, talk only between Europeans, but also with uh, other geographic areas. So we could speak for those norms and standards that would be key to define what is a green company, what is a green portfolio. And this is very important. Thank you very much. Grégoire, Lorenzo said it uh, earlier, there are many issues Uh, and uh, regulation standards are very difficult to understand for the public at large. So if we set up an infrastructure, we will still need to uh, have capital come to attract capital. So how should we proceed to attract European capital or uh, global capital? And how? Uh, Will it be possible to have this uh, CMU function? Well, there was a very famous debate between Bill Clinton, who was uh, a candidate for uh, uh, the presidential election, and uh, George Bush's father. And he said, this is a stupid investment. I think the question asked in Europe is uh, clean uh, fund investments are stupid. And I think the best way to mobilize uh, is to uh, uh, start uh, in own funds uh, battle. So 150 billion euros were uh, uh, used for Europe, and we have to mobilize them in Europe. Uh, concerning France, we have uh, 300 
50 uh, billion euros that are uh, uh, not invested in our economy and that are sleeping. So we have to uh, uh, start the battle of uh, uh, ownerships fund and try to use this as a catalyst for accelerating the CMU. And there's a third and last point or level concerning reporting. It is to use savings. And we saw this with life insurance in France because we have those savings. It exists. And it should be massively invested in companies so that we see the champion that will uh, um, build the European security for tomorrow. This is possible. There are savings it, in France, in Italy, in Germany. And if those countries mobilize to create this, uh, then it will be created and it would uh, answer uh, the um, uh, requirements of uh, uh, savers that want to have more profitability and stability. Now, this is a very peculiar era because uh, 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 political uh, uh, currency and the uh, uh, monetary policy uh, that was uh, uh, initiated by the European banks. Uh, and because the Central European Bank buys back a lot of uh, uh, riskless assets, isn't it difficult to uh, make it clear uh, uh, what the CMU is all about? I'll try to be clear. Yes, and short, please, says the moderator. Well, the Europe uh, 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 produces the largest amount of savings in the world. It is the largest quantity. Now, where do the savings go? When it's in banks, there is zero profitability. Now, when there's um, uh, they buy security, the profitability is zero. Now, if we look for equity, most of them are Americans. And where will the American invest European money? Well, where there are markets. And there are no markets in Europe. So they invest in the US. So Europeans finance the American economy. That's quite simple. If we wish European savings to finance uh, SMEs, startups, uh, businesses, uh, high techs uh, that are Europeans, well, we need a European market. And in my opinion, that would be the right strategy. If we keep on financing the American economy year after year, uh, they develop high tech giants. It's fine for them, but it's not good for the Europeans. So I think we need to explain this to people. And it's not very difficult to understand this. If we uh, uh, rely upon uh, economic patriotism, maybe we could rely upon uh, uh, financial patriotism. Yes, but we have to do this on the European level and not individually for each country. And we could then set up standards so that even if uh, savings are managed by other people, they show stability, transparency. Because right now we're out of the game. We uh, hand our money to other people who choose their own regulator. And because there are 28 regulators in Europe, well, people may choose as they will. So what would be the role of the European Central Bank here? I think uh, uh, it would be favorable because we do not have any, uh, uh, enough assets in Europe. So if we had a denser capital market, a larger one, then we would have a uh, monetary policy that would be much more stable. But it depends upon uh, national regulators and policymakers. 
So if we create a unique regulator, well, national regulators will lose some of their powers. And when we have the banking union, uh, well, of course, the national regulators did not really agree. But we need to have some sort of a superior instance and uh, some sort of a shared sovereignty. So politicians must be convinced by bankers also. Uh, I could say, well, in the end, it will uh, depend upon the uh, uh, private saving. Maybe because we've gone through a crisis, there will be a larger wire card. And people, because they will lose money, will ask for a European regulator. And uh, they will realize that uh, this European regulator needs to be reinforced because European savers are losing money uh, because the market is not structured enough. Jean-Frédéric Deleuze, I would like you to answer a very important question that Jezebel asked earlier when she said, is it relevant to develop a European market a European capital market, when in Europe we have SMEs that need a financial uh, uh, backup? And is it because we have SMEs that we do not have the European capital market? Or is it because we do not have the European capital market that we cannot help SMEs? It's a vicious circle, in, in, in fact, right? Oh, that's a very interesting question. SMEs have financing problems, but also equity problems. So uh, this is a very specific area because inflation will be 2 to 3 percent and interest rate will be negative so that uh, uh, investment in banks uh, have no values. So if people want their savings to be profitable, they can uh, uh, use private equity and go uh, to uh, invest in SMEs. So I think it's really a political problem, and it won't be settled only through regulation. We need a series of global actions concerning tax, budget, that would help regulate context. And I think it will be working only if there's a dialogue between uh, uh, financial powers and state uh, uh, powers. You remember the crisis in 2008 and the photography where Michel Pedro stands in front of Christine Lagarde for the recovery plan. Uh, and it was uh, the fastest plan ever vo voted uh, in less than eight days. Uh, and it allowed uh, to stop uh, the uh, massive liquidity crisis in October uh, 2008. And today, when uh, we talk about uh, SMEs financing or capital markets with governments, we uh, face people talking about risk controls, uh, that is um, uh, zero risk somehow, and uh, also uh, uh, problems about conflict of interest. So as financiers and bankers, we have to talk to government about uh, economic development and growth. Okay, so we need to find the arguments to convince uh, people on the subject. Mirella Agache Durand, in this world where people are looking for meaning, there's probably an important lever, which is uh, the environmental transition. We're talking about the future. We're talking about uh, preserving the environment, and this is meaningful. So uh, this greening of the economy, uh, how can it be added to CMU? Yes, in fact, you started saying that today we are fortunate enough uh, because we know that uh, uh, 
the private saver uh, is looking for a, a greener economy because, in fact, it is meaningful. And um, we see that uh, throughout Europe. Uh, when we collect data uh, and see uh, where investments go, well, uh, when there are green labels uh, or when uh, um, uh, the products answer uh, environmental, mon environmental norms, uh, well, uh, private savings go there. So I think this is an unprecedented opportunity because it would allow us to uh, reconcile the investor with the stock market. And we can explain that the capitals are not uh, what uh, private savers would think. Uh, it's not about gambling as you would do in casino. In fact, uh, those savings would help create other companies in uh, uh, different segments. Uh, it would allow to create a uh, technological innovation for a green economy t tomorrow. So apart from explaining this, and because we have a great opportunity to seize uh, this uh, uh, desire of uh, uh, private savers to invest in green economy, we have to be very transparent concerning those green investments. Maybe we should have a uh, European standard so that uh, the ISR standard would be the same throughout Europe. We also talked about standards, which are important, but we should keep sovereignty on extra financial data. We were upstream concerning uh, data providers that were uh, 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 that came from Europe, but they've been outsourced. So we have to find a regional sovereignty on those tools, because if companies have extra financial data which are clear and <clears throat> allow us to compare uh, companies on the same criteria would be a key instrument for this partnership with uh, private uh, savers. And uh, we'll conclude this round table. Uh, coming back to Jacob von Weisecker <coughs> in Germany. So Jacob, uh, what about uh, a green transition? Is it the ambition that might uh, reconcile everyone? Yes, I think it is a fundamental aspect. Uh, we should have, be more transparent, be more organized. Uh, uh, a taxonomy would be useful. But I would like to add that uh, there is an extra dimension. Of course, there are many investors, and that's a very good thing. They want to invest in sustainable investments because they feel it is a moral obligation. But in the middle term, those investors will not accept a yield which is inferior to uh, uh, others. So uh, the advantage of uh, green financing would be to create a basis of investors within the population that would think uh, it would be unfair if the yield is not sufficient. So we need regulations that forbid uh, companies to have uh, harmful uh, practices for the environment and the climate. And that would change the economic policy concerning uh, protecting the environment and the climate, because those who bought green assets then will say we do not accept to be disadvantaged towards those who uh, bought any kinds of assets. So it is not only a dim demand 
of most investors, but it might be a lever to transform the uh, economic policy in Europe and also in the US. Because the Biden administration has really started to uh, consider uh, the Paris Treaty seriously. But there are still difficulties in the Congress to obtain majorities so as to have uh, a, a, a price on uh, greenhouse gases. So I think this would be an important project for the financial sector, but also politically. Thanks a lot, uh, Jacob van Weizsäcker. So, uh, in fact, uh, uh, innovation are generated by crisis, and that might be a motive for hope. Now, the coordinator of the Cercle des Economistes, Gisabel coupé soubiron uh, conclusion. Well, I would have loved to ask questions, in fact, but uh, we heard a lot about equity and uh, this reform about uh, capital market union insists about securitization and debt but i think equity might be uh, 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 something to investigate we also heard that european savings are not uh, well oriented uh, and the thing is that those savings are managed by uh, uh, bankers, so those banking uh, financial intermediaries might have a look at their portfolio again. Then I heard that CMU was probably too serious to be handled over to regulators, but Lorenzo insisted on the uh, need to unify organization and control of markets, so the need for a uh, unique regulator. We have not uttered the word uh, health crisis. Have we recovered already? Well, in fact, you said that we need a good crisis for things to improve. I'm happy that Mirella was here to talk about uh, greener markets. Now, concerning dialogues between finance, the financials and the political, uh, I think it is overwhelming at times. Thanks a lot, Isabel. Thank you all. And I thank you because we were on time, and I congratulate you for this. Thanks.